But I'm sure I, I have a habit. Okay. You hear me chewing this ice? I'm terrible. Happy birthday to you. Uh, and okay, 
okay, I'm sorry, but I just saw her come into the room, so I want to say happy birthday because I forgot to make my post before I risked it. So, Scorpio, but happy birthday, girl. Go ahead. Scorpio just came in and said she's a life path. Hey, yeah, my daughter's a life path. Hey. And uh, life path A's are very fortunate when it, in the money area and just fortunate, period. You know, they have no problem with getting a job. They always get a job. They always got people, always, people give them money. Um, Nature Boy's life path is an A. So, what that tell you? <laughs> you got all kind of folks giving him money, right? So when they know, when they realize they're fortunate, when they know how fortunate they are, they can really use that to their advantage. So you guys who are life past eight, use that to your advantage, okay? Um, and so from her, your birthday plus your month. Um, so kiss the veil, your birthday plus your month. Okay, so you was born on the fifth day. So five is freedom. Five is freedom. And so, like, um, fives, they can't really, if they can make plans if they want to, but usually the plans don't go as planned. It always, something always gets in the way of the plan. Like, if they make a yeah. plan to go to Hawaii or something on a Tuesday, they're going to have to change it to a Friday, or they're going to have to change it to next month, or, you know, they made a plan to go to the corner store, which is down to the street to the left. They got to go off to the right first and then come back and go to the left. It's like, it's ruled by Uranus. So the five energy is very unpredictable. They they have to just go with the flow. You know, you know making plans don't really work too well for them. Um, and your um, birthday, plus your month, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, five again. So freedom is very important for you, Kiss the Bill. Mm -hmm. Like you can't be tied down. You like, and so when we take that and we go into your chart, when we take that and we go into your chart, you don't have anything in a fixed sign. The only thing you do have yes. fix, the only thing you do have in fixed is a Saturn, but and that, that's not enough though. You need something else. You know, you need like a, your Sun or your Moon or your Mercury or your Mars or your Venus in a fixed sign or your rising and everything. All of your planets. You got Mars and Virgo. You got uh, Mercury, Sun and Jupiter in um in a cardinal and you got venus if you got any questions ask them to me too you got venus moon and mutable so cardinal and mutable they're always moving they always get making things happen they always get things done either starting projects or they're completing projects like uh -huh. it's you have you don't have anything fixed that's why i said when i when you said you took a nap i was like i'm surprised you got a nap in there but i'm pretty sure you sleep with one eye open i'm pretty sure you sleep with one eye open you know, you're not a heavy sleeper. You know, you're always ready. If somebody woke up, if somebody woke me up and said, "Girl, get it. We got to drive to New York." You can, you get up and do it. You, you better go. You better do it. Um, yeah. And you got your son is in Virgo. That's the workaholic. That's the per, that's the serviceman. They always ready to service people, help people. And you know, Virgos can get three hours of sleep and get up and work for eight, 40 hours. I got a cousin who's a Virgo. And like literally, she'll fall asleep anywhere. She'll get on the couch. She'll sleep with one eye open. <laughs> and if we got to wake up in three hours to go to New York, she ready to go. You know, we did it before. We did. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Um, so, you your rising sign is Gemini, and my rising sign is Gemini as well. So we have that in common. <laughs> what? Yes, we do. Wait, my my rising is in Gemini. Your rising sign is Gemini. Remember the other night when I when I heard you on the line. And I said, do you have anything in Sagittarius or Gemini? And you said, yeah, you do. Yeah. I picked it up right away. I picked the Gemini right up away. I picked the Sagittarius right up right away. And guess how I picked it up? Ow. Because you said something. I don't want to say what you said because it might tell on you. <laughs> go ahead. Go but ahead. It's usually when people have something, because the opposite sign of Sagittarius is Gemini. Okay, mm -hmm. so you have your your uh your rise your moon is in uh, Sagittarius and your rising sign is Gemini, and um, when people have something in both of those signs like that, um, mm -hmm. this is a person who can be very manipulating. Okay, they can be mm -hmm. very manipulating. They can be they're they're you know it's Gemini is good at reading people's body languages. They're good at reading mm -hmm. people. Period. They're good at mimicking people. Okay, um, 
And it's like they can literally go inside that person's body and just become them, you know. Um, yeah, that is definitely me. And so <laughs> because they know how to do that, they kind of like already inhibit a person because they've already embodied them. So like the other day, mm -hmm. when you said you asked a guy if he if he just trying to have sex or what, that might be what you try to do. <laughs> when you said that shit, I said she in Gemini, she got some Sagittarius influence. <laughs> but right away, because the Gemini will, the Gemini part will make you see what they already want, right? But you gotta, you want to hear it. You see, Gemini's always gotta communicate, so they always want people to communicate. They don't never want to just right. go about what they pick up or what they feel. They want, they want to pick it up, feel it. Then they want the words to solidify it. So. Even though you already knew this about the person, you want to hear it out their mouth now. But you know they ain't going to tell the truth, so you got to manipulate them telling the truth. And your way right. of doing that is to make them think that that's the same thing you want, but it ain't the same thing you want. Then once you, find, <laughs> once you get the word that that's what they want, boom, you out of there. And Jim and I are good at doing disappearing acts. They're good at doing disappearing yeah. acts. Okay? Yeah. Like, so they were, they're like, they're, they're like magicians. Like, they'll be there, they'll stir some shit up, and then why everybody else going at it, Gemini, and went across town somewhere, and nobody even realized that the Gemini ain't even there no more, and the Gemini the one that started the shit up. <laughs> Put those two together, the, Sag the Sagittarius and the Gemini, um, this is a very, very super duper, like, clever person, you know. They can use, they can use their energy for good. Well, anybody can use their energy and their chart for the good or for bad, okay? Anybody can. Mm -hmm. But the Gemini, you know, is it's a, um, an air sign, so it's very social. Um, and it's very communicative. And your sun sign and your rising sign is both ruled by Mercury. So you're very mercurial. Mercurial is um, people who always got to be doing something, always got to be moving, talking. Um they can be really into health too. They can really, but they have contradictions about like they'll be, they'll have a good diet, but they'll smoke cigarettes. It's some shit like that, you know. Or they'll have, mm -hmm. or they'll be, they'll they'll keep their body clean, but their house is a mess. Or their house is a mess, but they don't look change their clothes every day. It's always something, a contradiction about um, the mercurial people. But right. they strive, they're always striving for, for perfection, though. They're always striving for that. Um, and then you have Mars in the first house. Now Mars rules the first house, so it's even more so lets me know that you, girl, you always doing something. Like you just everything you mm -hmm. know, keep pointing to you always doing something. Like you don't feel right unless you're working. You got to be working. You got to be productive some kind of way. You know how I feel right. You ain't gonna. Yeah. You're not the kind of person that's like if you stay. Let's say you stay in the house all day. Mm -hmm. if, you, if you stay in the house all day, you didn't cook. You didn't clean up. You didn't rearrange. You didn't um, <laughs> got rid of some old shit you don't need no more. You gonna make use of your time some kind of way. You ain't gonna just be sitting up watching TV all day. You know you okay. watch TV for maybe thirty minutes and then okay, it's, it's time. Or you you very multitasker too, like a multitasker like crazy. Like you can watch TV and clean or eat or talk. You 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 do that shit online. You do that online. You just eating you know going to get food, talking to other people, telling me to be quiet so you can say I'm working to somebody. You always multitasking. Like you multitask like crazy. Like Mercury rules the nerve. It rules the nervous system. Okay. Okay. So yeah. what, the, what you what you need to do because don't let the energy run you. You got to run the energy because being that it Mercury rules the nervous system, you mm -hmm. have to train yourself to relax your nerves because Gemini is the messenger. Mercury is the messenger, okay? And Mercury, the energy of Mercury will just completely take over you to the point where you always doing something, you always talking, you always giving, going out, giving the messages to people. But see, the energy is inside the physical body and the physical body can get sick from that. So you, the challenge for you is that you have to learn how to take your breaks, learn how to meditate. You're gonna have to really, really do this for yourself because the energy, Otherwise, the energy was to completely take over you. Have you ever, ever heard of Bobby Hemet? No. Okay, well, Bobby Hemet is a metaphysician. And anybody in the room ever heard of Bobby Hemet? Bobby Hemet? Yeah, Bobby Hemet. You can go on, no, 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 on no. YouTube and YouTube him. Um, he is a metaphysician and he's a Sagittarius. And um, 
I love him to death. He was my, he's one of my favorite metaphysicians. And I used to always, but you know, he's a um, medium. He's a medium. And like whenever he do, um, whenever he does, uh, what do they call that? When people come out and they talk lectures, whenever he comes out and do lectures, he's completely taken over by the, by the uh, messenger energy, completely taken over by it. And the energy just uses him. See, the energy don't, don't, the energy is not, it's not physical. It, it communicates mm-hmm. through the physical, but it's not physical. So it doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't pay attention to whether or not it's doing you any harm. So you have right. to be in charge of the energy. See, Bobby Hemet, every time he talked, the, the energy was just coming through. I said, you know what? I'm worried about him. I'm worried about Bobby Hemet because when he up there and he doing his lectures, he he be going real, real deep with the shit. The energy just completely takes over him. And, you know, um, he, he be moving a lot. He be sweating. He be wiping his forehead and shit. I'm like, damn. He needs to relax. He need he, the energy that completely took over him. Long story short, he wound up having a stroke. Okay, mm. and I kind of worried. I was worried about him that something would happen to him. And I wanted to reach. I talked to him on the phone and stuff. I talked to his wife and everything, and um, I wanted to tell him about it. You know, but uh, I knew that you know that uh, kind of he already knew, and his wife definitely knew because she is Scorpio. So I knew. They already knew, you know, some people just be knowing right. what's up. And, and sometimes people will just play it all the way to the end and um, and take their chances. And so every time mm-hmm. he had the stroke, we ain't really heard much from him, but he got a lot of good information out there, like infinite information. I could never get enough of him, but I'm just want to share that with you, that take some time off for your okay. health. Don't let the energy keep using you and keep making you go and go and go because you're in a physical body and your physical body mm-hmm. will get worn down from that. You have... Um, and speaking of that, you have um, Pluto in the sixth house of health. Okay? Pluto is the planet of transformation. It's the planet of transformation. Okay? So you got transformation in the health house. So transformation can either go left or it can go right or it can stay in the middle, which is up to you. You make the choice. Um, and so you have uh, Venus and Libra. And Mars and Gemini. Now, sign wise, your know, Mars is not square your know, Venus, but uh, but um, degree wise, it is. So, people who have Mars square Venus, I, I have this also, okay. But I'm 45 years old, so I've been I've been doing the work on myself, all right. But usually, when your Mars, <laughs> usually when your Mars is square your Venus, it, it usually means that in relationships, it's all you you you, you don't you you ain't never satisfied. Okay. Uh, you can be very, you can be very demanding. You can be very demanding, um, and you. But you, a lot of times, you write about your demands. You write about your demands, but it's not, it's not what you do, how you do it. The way you're expressing your demands, you gotta, you gotta tweak that a bit. You gotta tweak it. And what? Mars, Mars square Venus can it can denote somebody who gets uh who gets bored quickly in relationships. Okay, they get very bored. They get very bored. Yep. So and I don't like being tied down, like you said. I just I don't. You know, it's something about relationships that kind of make me, you know, like um, after a while, I'd be like, okay, like I'm ready to go do my own thing. You know what I'm saying? Like don't don't try to be up under me. So you yeah. you you write about a lot of stuff that you say, and um, I just kind of want to, to speak on on a few things just like when you said um like i may have a good this but a bad that like me right i have a bad eating habit you know but but i counteract that like because i don't smoke i don't drink or nothing like that but i have a bad eating habit right so it's kind of like hand in hand but like you said too and sometimes i do i get to the point where i be so busy and i'm doing so much you know i don't get to take care of my home how i need to like you know clean it up and make sure you know what i'm saying so i kind of wanted to cut in on that but i didn't want to keep doing it you know while you was giving no, take, me, cut in whenever you want to cut you in. spot on yeah you spot on thank you and um so relationship wise um what um I already know that you gotta have your freedom is very important to you like if you if, if the relationship starts to look routine like okay we have sex, we go out to dinner, we come home, we watch TV. 
If it starts to look too predictable, you're not gonna you're not gonna like that. So you need somebody that's um, whose freedom is just as important as as um, yours, but that doesn't mean that you want them to go out and cheat on you or you cheat on them. But you are you are a variety person, so I can see you trying all types of relationships. I can see you. Um, you know, doing monogamy. I can see you like the other night you talked about doing polygamy. I can also see you being polyamorous. I can also see you because you don't have anything in fixed. You know, mm-hmm. n- nothing is in fixed. So you you can you can try a variety of different types of relationships, and you're still young. So I can see you. I can see you trying different things out because you get bored easy, and you're trying to figure out which one you're going to be content with. Well, the fact mm-hmm. of the matter is. You may not be content with any of these things. The only thing that's going to make you feel content is variety. So, uh, if you, but, or, with, the bottom line is this. With, with the kind of planets that you have, with how your chart looks, you have to pick a relationship that works for you. You, you can't go by tradition, which traditional, I don't even think polygamy would be good for you, enough for you, because you would get bored with that too. Because if you want to start to kind of routine, you have to do something that's going to make you feel, um, oh yeah, also, your moon is square Venus. Now that really denotes the individual who needs variety because, um, and you just need to be able to change whenever you're ready to change. Like you might be, you can be in a relationship with somebody who y'all live in the same house, but he live on the other wing. He live in the other wing. And you got your wing, you know. You, you have to come up with I'm even you know I, I got Venus in Aquarius so mm-hmm. um with me having Venus in Aquarius my idea and see Aquarius is about breaking the rules and making your own rules okay my right. idea of I, you know I got Mars square Venus like you so I got the board issue too but the reality is is the older we get we want somebody that we can spend some time with that we can have as a, somebody that we can spend time with that we can enjoy the company every now and then. But my, my idea of a, a relationship that I'm not gonna get bored in is a relationship where he give me some space, I give him some space. And if we if we decide we wanna do five years together, and at, at the end of the five years, if we decide we wanna renew our contract, we do, but if we don't, then we can go our separate ways. Mm-hmm. So you have to make your relationship the way you wanna make a relationship. You gotta deal with people who is like you in the sense that freedom is important, but also respect is important. Also, right. not only just respect for self, but you know, respect for the relationship. And you have to sit down with these people, whoever you're involved with, and be like, okay, this is what I like, right? This is what I'm feeling right now. This is what I'm feeling right now, but a month not from here, I may not be feeling like this. What do you feel about that? But right now, this is what I want. Mm-hmm. I want to be faithful to you, I want to be loyal to you, I want to be monogamous with you. I don't know what's going to happen six months from now, but this is what I want to do. I want to cook for you. I want to cater to you. I would like for you to do this for me, whatever. Put that all that shit down on a piece of paper, okay? All right, and then not only that, with your Mars square Venus, um, your Mars, like again, is in Gemini and your Venus is in Libra. So that's air, okay? So with the Mars being immutable, which again is connected to the nerves, it's not what you do, it's how you do it. So when you let me p- people know how pissed off you are, practice doing it calmly. Oh. You don't want to yell, you don't want to scream, you don't want to ridicule. Even if they disrespecting you, still stay calm. Because people who, who look at it, I did a video on this. I haven't uploaded it yet. I'm going to upload it. I got to edit it some shit, but when I upload it, I'm going to send it to you. People, they see it, they'll see it in you and they'll try to like poke you and make it come out, you know? They'll try to like trigger you, mm. represents triggers. So like, and people can see these triggers in you and then once they start seeing it, they can use it against you. So don't, don't give them what they want, which is for you to yell, for you to pop off and don't give them what they want. Cause they, sometimes they want to right. justify whatever they claiming is right for them to do to you. Don't give them that. And as long as you know that you were respectful in the discussion, as long as you know you didn't have call, as long as you know you didn't pop off a yellow screen with things popping off your neck and shit, as long as you know you didn't do that, then you did right. Okay? okay. It's not what you do, it's how you do it. It's okay to be combative. It's okay to argue, but we can argue calmly. We can argue calmly. We don't have to yell, we don't have to scream. 
And that's where maturity comes in, because Mars rules immaturity. It, it, you know, it rules Aries. Aries, you know, they can be very immature because they're very impulsive and they worry about the consequences afterwards. So don't don't let that energy run yeah. you. Run the energy, okay? Yeah, that's me. Now, <laughs> you got Moon and Sagittarius, um, and so Moon. When you said that you was an open book, uh, um. That's the reason why you said that because Sagittarius is a sign of truth, and um, you know they they can they can be liars, but they're not good at lying. They're not good at it at all because they really just want to be honest about everything. <laughs> they want to be not honest about everything, you know. Um, and you can tell when they're lying because they're not good at it, you know. Um, and so a lot of them just practice telling the truth because they know they're not good at lying, and you know. And, and, yeah. and, and sometimes they'll try to beat around the bush because they don't want to tell you the truth and they don't want to tell you a lie. That's what these said. That's me too. So when they beat around the bush, that's when you know they ain't coming forth with, the, you know, the real info. But mm-hmm. it's oppose um, Mars. So you're very, very sensitive. Very, very sensitive. Um, mm-hmm. And, but, let me see something else here. What else do I want to point out? Um, okay, so you have um, Moon in the seventh house. And, oh, interesting. Hold on. Oh, okay. Okay. So, um, your money, your money uh, comes through the, the planet that makes sure that there was your second house. Oh, interesting. Wait a minute. Hold on. I need my damn glasses on. Okay. So your second house is ruled by cancer. So the second house of finances is ruled by the moon. My, my second house is ruled by the moon as well. And your moon is over in the, in the partnership house, uh, relationship house. So your money comes through partnerships. Like what kind of business? You, you do nails and stuff, right? Uh-huh. Do you do it with a friend or is it like just a... Is it a friend of yours that owns the shop? Is family member or something? Um, no, it's kind of no. It was not really a friend, but just this lady um, that was kind of hey, I'm looking for a nail tech, da 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 da, you know. And I kind of was like going in as like a partnership to kind of help her out, like that type of deal. You know what I'm saying? Okay, so your moon is a Sagittarius, um, and. Um, your moon moon rules your second house of finances so you probably don't stand in jobs for long either you probably go from job to job because you're kind of like an adventure when it comes to work like you know if this is what you cool with for now you cool but the Sagittarius is all about taking their arrow and when they you know when, when time is over here they take their arrow and shoot it and see where it lands at next and so like in the work department adventure is very important for you and like you probably get most of your your gigs and your uh, work do be an adventure. It's always, it's it's probably just like, it just falls out of the air how you get your work. Um, but you know what? I have, um, I do, I do resonate with that. But also, because I'm a person that loves stability, I have to have stability and that's very important to me. Mm-hmm. So the thing is, is that, okay, I have a job that I've been working on. I've been at, I've been at that job for like six years now, right? Mm-hmm. But I only work on the weekend at that job. Okay. But I've been there for six, uh, six years. Okay. And th- throughout the week, like Monday through Fridays, I like to like, you know, like I done did, I done did apartment leasing. I done did um, selling cars, an auto salesman. I worked at a bakery. Um... I was like, uh, like a, like a assistant, like a assistant, like a classroom helper. I don't really know what to call it. A classroom helper to like, um, you know, special needs children. Um, girl, what else have I did? I, I, I worked at the radio. I worked at the yeah, the radio station. Um, I didn't did so so many like Monday through Friday things. But yeah, you right, like it don't ever last too long. But I've always kept that weekend job because, because I can you're tell, like, a little bit on weekends. Can you have to go one day? 
you probably wouldn't be at that job that long. But and then you, even on some weekends, if you don't feel like going this weekend, you don't go. Shut up. If you don't feel like going on the weekend, you don't go. So yeah, it's a very flexible job for you. It kind of you kind of can go when you want to and don't have to go. And then it's like you, it, is it full time when you go? Is it eight hours? Like four hours? What is it like? It's tw- it's twelve hours overnight, seven p seven a. Oh okay, all right. Um, and what kind what do you, what kind of work is that? Um, medical assistant, like um, like CPA or something like that, stuff like that. So you get to move around, taking care of people. Yeah, taking care of people. Okay, because you got a, uh, you know, Moon is the mother, and um, and that show that rules your house of finances. Cancer, Cancer is the mother, so. Um, I got Moon and Virgo. I'm always taking care of people. And Moon rules my, and the planet that rules my second house is in my fourth house. I work from home. See, the planet that rules my finance house is over in a partnership house. So, so you have many partnerships and relationships with people. So, um, well, not you, but I'm saying with it being your uh, seventh house being ruled by Sagittarius, Sagittarius is the uh, sign of abundance. So it ain't never just no one thing with Sagittarius. It's a whole lot. It's like whenever you're dealing with Sagittarius, you're dealing with abundance. You're dealing with um, expansion. You're dealing with a lot. It ain't never nothing light. It's always something big with Sagittarius. And you have Moon in here. So that that um, so bringing that back to the bad eating habits. All right. So your Moon is opposed Mars in um, the first house and. Let me see what else is going on with Moon. Moon is trying Mercury. Moon is square Venus. Moon is opposed Mars. Moon is square Jupiter. Okay, okay. So, what I get, the the bad eating habits comes in from, um, it comes in when you uh, feeling upset about perhaps relationships when something when you have challenges in relationships it comes in also from just not having the time not taking up the time to prepare your meals and having to just grab some mm-hmm. so, um like i said you don't have anything fixed in your chart you have nothing fixed see let me explain to you what's fixed in in astrology you have fixed cardinal and mutable the fixed signs is uh taurus scorpio um Aquarius and Leo, those are the fixed signs, okay? And then mm-hmm. the mutable signs is Gemini, uh, Sagittarius, Virgo, and Pisces. The fixed signs are the ones who are stubborn as hell, okay? They are stubborn as hell. Like, you, it's hard to, you know, you can't really get them to compromise with you. You know, the fixed sign, when you think about a fixed sign, think about a big ass mountain, okay? You can't move it. The only thing that's gonna make that mountain change its form is for like a natural disaster to happen and for like fixed signs mm. for the tourists if something that happens with their money because they bought that money they'll change for the scorpio if, if you threaten a sex life they'll change okay aquarius <laughs> if you for the for the leo if you don't give them no attention they'll change they'll change do whatever i gotta do to get the attention um and i'm talking mm. about the fixed signs okay something drastic gotta happen for them to change form Okay, now, and you always find yourself compromising with them, and you know, un, you know, uncompromising yourself. You find yourself compromising yourself to compromise with them because they never give in. Nature boys and swords, Scorpio rising, and he got a moon and Leo. He got three fixed. He got more fixed in his chart than he got anything else in his chart. Okay, I always tell people he's a per- perfect case study because he put his life out there for us all to see. But getting back to the subject, um. Mutable. Mutable signs are the workers. They're the workers. They're the ones that the cardinal signs, Capricorn, Cancer, Libra, and Aries, they, Capricorn, Cap, Cancer, Libra, and Aries, they create the projects, and then the mutable signs carry the projects out. They're the workers. And then the fixed signs mm-hmm. preserve. They preserve all the shit that's already been done by everybody else. Okay? So, you have mutable and cardinal, so you know how to get shit started. And you know how to do the work necessary to get the stuff started. It's, it's mm-hmm. challenging for you to fit, to finish things up. You got to keep coming back, yep. back and keep coming back, keep coming back. <laughs> it might take you sometimes years to finish some shit up, but you always got it in your mind. Oh, damn, I got to go do that. I got to do that. I got to handle this. I got to handle that. You always thinking about getting to it. And then finally, when you get
get to it. You know, you get on it, you work on it as much as you can. And then if you got to stop again and go do something else, because you always got projects going. Cardinals always making bail and getting things started. Um, and you don't have anything fixed. So when you don't have anything fixed in your chart, it's like a person who just can't fix them. You know, so you got to train yourself. It's not that you can't do it, but whenever you lack in something on your chart, that means you got work to do. Whenever you got challenges in your chart, that means you got work to do. And we all, everybody got a challenge. Everybody got work to do. So um, don't feel like something wrong with you because you ain't got nothing fixed. This ain't the first trial I've seen like this. Okay? You just, right, that's right. why it's important to have astrology in our life early so our parents can start working on us and training us from young. Because in the Asian cultures, they train their kids. They, everybody, you can go into an Asian classroom and like when the kids are like in junior high, even if it wasn't, sometimes they, sometimes Asians have been known to train, tra- uh, train their kids from being left-handed to right with a right hand, even though by nature they roll with the left. They'll train in the right with the right. So they'll do this young because in their in their society they believe that you know you're supposed to be you're supposed to do things a certain way. And no, right. no matter what your nature is, we about to break you out of that. Boom, put you over here. So the fact that that can be done. Um, you can be trained to relax and sit still. You can be trained to do that, but you got to start early. That's why astrology is important to have when you're young. Um, okay, I'm going to do one more thing, then I'm going to have to close out. Okay. Are there any questions you want to ask me about? Um, no, I feel like I'm, I'm going to have to ask. I'm, I'm going to have to really gather them, whatever them questions up, because I understand astrology, but you know, not really. You, well, I mean, not not really. But okay, like I don't understand what the positions are or what the houses mean, and like that's my problem with it, right? Because uh-huh. I don't necessarily understand that part of it. But I'm working to gain an understanding for it and trying to learn. Mm. Oh, you know, I was going to tell everybody who's looking to get a reading from me. I don't do readings, okay? I don't do them. I, I try. I used to do them a long time ago. It takes up too much time and a lot of time. And the money that I feel that I should charge for it, nobody's going to want to pay that because it takes up. I mean, to break. See, now what they're doing is they got these computers where they just, you just plug the information in and they give you general information on your chart. I don't have no computer to plug shit in. I, can, I mean, I can give you a computer printout reading, but you can do that yourself. So, mm-hmm. I mean, I can tell you where to go to to get a free print out of your chart. I mean, you know, but it doesn't really go into depth on it because it's just giving you general information because it's got thousands of people that's plugging the information and getting those kind of readings. So I don't do those kind of readings. Um, I do do like um, relationship readings. I can do that for you. And I can tell you what's going on with you and your partner, you know, whoever you would. I can tell you before you get with them what challenges you're going to have before you go into it. I can do that. If you go on my page, I have a, um, I have a, a couple of things that I do on there for like ten dollars, twenty dollars, things like that. Now it's part. Well, let me tell you something. Go ahead. Real quick, if you put it out there, I because you never you you would be surprised. Like some people really want to know. Some people really want to know about themselves. Some people really want to know where where they could apply work to in their personal life, in their inner life. You understand what I'm yeah. saying? So you can't be putting out that energy. That oh, like I feel like I'm worth this, or I feel like my value is that's, worth this. You understand what I'm so, saying? So you have to put it out there. No, honestly, like I'll tell you what I can't do for you, but I just don't want to. I don't want to do chart readings because I want to give everybody a hundred percent. You know what I mean? And a chart, mm-hmm. like if you're gonna get through a whole chart, I, I'm gonna at least want a whole month to really like sift through your chart. Let me tell you what you got in your All chart. Right. Look, check this out. You gotta do. Planets and the signs, that's one thing. Then you gotta do planets in the houses, that's another. Then you gotta do planets in aspect to each other, that's another. Now, some astrologers, a lot of people out there, what they do is they'll charge you $25 and they'll only do your planets in your houses and that's it. And then give you five aspects mm-hmm. and they'll charge $25 for that. Then they'll tell you if you want more, they're gonna charge you this much for that or whatever. I don't wanna do that to people. You see what I'm saying? Um, and what I used to do in the past was I used to just go. And get the aspect because like I'm the, I can interpret to you. I can tell you what to go look for. I was going to do it. Hey, 
Patreon account. And I'm going to have people sign up for my Patreon so I can teach them how to do this mm-hmm. themselves. Because I really prefer for you guys to all learn this stuff yourself. You want to be so I taught myself this shit. I mean, and I've taught, I mean, I love astrology. Like how I got into astrology is my family used to be, they, I was raised Catholic. And they was they were uh-huh. against astrology. They would they would always say things like, even though they against astrology, they would say, "You a stubborn old Capricorn, and I'm a Capricorn." And they used to say it about, right? And I'm like, "How you gonna be against astrology?" But then you saying this kind of shit, right? Uh-huh. So <laughs> when I was uh doing. Security, one day I uh, step that the white folks when they get off work they don't come back to work like how black folks do when they gone they gone you ain't gonna see them till the next day so my gym right. arrived and peeped game on it I was like why would I stay here in a secure building well ain't nobody here there's a bookstore down the street I'm going down the street go read so I started going yeah. down to the bookstore and I read every black novel that was out at the time and I got bored with the black novels and I came across the metaphysics uh, section and I seen astrology and I said let me go check that out so I went over there and I picked up uh, Black Sun Sign by Thelma Bellflower. That's the first book I picked up. I read the Capricorn and was like reading myself off the page. I got lunch, right? I bought that book mm-hmm. the same day. And um, oh, wow. And that was hella years ago. That was like when I was about, I had to be about 23, 24. And so ever since then, I just went deep into astrology. Then I went deep into numerology. And I just love it because it just tells the truth over and over. It's the only thing that ever tells the truth to me. Like when anybody else lying to you, astrology gonna tell you the truth. <laughs> and so I said all that to say that I'm really, I'm really passionate about astrology. I really love astrology. I can teach, I can teach like crazy. I mean, I got Sun in Capricorn, Mercury. I mean, Mercury in Capricorn. I got Saturn if that rules Capricorn in my first house. So I was born to teach. You know, like I said, right. serenity was coming to me for this information um, when she came out of carbonation and she decided she wanted to read people's charts and I was saying to myself well you don't know enough to read charts but if folks don't pay you I guess that's on them you know so right. whenever she would run into a challenge she would come to me and you know we'd talk and um, she would ask me for advice I would give it to her and she knew that I knew my shit because when I came into her life I read her just from her birthday and I read her son from her birthday and I came back later on her Rambo. So she knew that I knew my shit. You know, I'm not going to Google shit. Like I'm looking at your chart. I'm literally looking at your. I'm like, did you see me Google anything? Hello. Anybody? Did, Hello. Did you hear me? The last thing I heard was you did a reading. You did a reading. You did Stephanie's reading. Then you came back and read Rambo. Yeah, I did her and her son. I read them online on her live just on her birthday i didn't even see her chart and she would she knew that i knew my shit and then it made her get into numerology because she wasn't even thinking about numerology all of a sudden she's into oh. numerology see and so she was doing readings on people and um when she would get to a place where she She needs to go a little deeper. She would come to me and I would tell her what to do. And I was like, wow, people are paying her. But I only knew that people was paying her because she used to be with Carbonation. And a lot of people thought that she just really knew her stuff because she was with Carbonation, you know. But she's learning and she's still, you know, she's very early in her study as well. So, but I've been doing this for over 20, 23 years. So I'm, I can teach you some shit. I can teach you. I, I'd rather put people to be self taught in it. Be self-taught, yeah. and uh, I said I'm just going to do a Patreon account, and I was going to charge like six dollars a month or something, you know. So if I got like thirty people that want to learn, I would charge them five, you know, six dollars a month, and I would post videos and I would post content and whatever questions they want to ask, they can ask me because, um, like, you're not going to get, you're not going to even. All your information from the book. No. Huh? Right. You know? 
I'm talking the game. No, game. My dog on headphones blissed out. Now, be quiet and let me listen to this lady. He's so stupid. What do you say? <laughs> he said, did I doze off? No, my headphones glitched out or something. Are you trying, he trying to play on me? He said, I'm just... No, he's trying to play on me. We got two Gemini wires on here. Ain't nobody falling asleep. <laughs> <laughs> Multitasking. Multitasking. <laughs> uh, yeah, in that order. <laughs> yeah, but um, Spirit Martina, if, you talk, if you're telling me I'm great, thank you. If that was for me, I appreciate it. So if anybody's interested in um, learning astrology, I think that's the best way to do it. You know, you study yourself first. Study yourself real, real close. Like, the more you study yourself, the more you will understand other people and you'll come to see that it's no need for you to expect people to be like you because everybody has a unique energy through their chart. So you don't you don't want mm -hmm. you know, this is why this is the reason why I started even coming out here with astrology because and I and I, I know I'm bringing nature web again, but you know, he's the one that peeped a lot of the people's interest interest in astrology. But even though he peeped right. their interest in astrology, he's not teaching right because ain't no such thing as an astrological program. I mean. You're not yeah. a, you're not a program. You're a big, huge piece of energy is what you are, your energy. And the chart shows the energy. When you look at it, you don't see nothing but energy in the chart. So, and the energy belongs to you. So you don't have to let the energy run you. You run the energy. See, he lets his chart energy run him. When you hear him talk about astrology, he always read, he be reading and saying, see what it say about me? See, see this what it say. Like he can't. Like he can't change none of that shit about him. Like he can't change. Some, like like it is what it, like what the what the, what the book says what it is. No, that's not the case. And this is the reason why he never wants to talk about his challenging aspects because, you know, he don't want to ever talk about that. Even on the video that I posted about him, you know, he came in here and said, "How come you're only talking about my challenging aspect?" But that that wasn't even true. I did mention his positive aspects, but at this point, his positive aspects don't even matter because he's in his lower self and he's. He's given in to letting those challenging aspects in his chart run him. He's not running them. And so and what right. so he has his moon square um, moon square Jupiter and uh, Jupiter opposed the sun. This talks about a person who's never going to be happy. This is a person who um, and he don't never get enough because Jupiter deals with abundance and it's, it's square his sun and it's uh, uh, I mean opposed his sun and square his moon. So he's emotionally mentally he's just totally unfulfilled and he mm -hmm. accepted that and this is the reason why he got to do everything in abundance like talk too much fuck a lot of women uh get online too much everything he do is in abundance because he's trying mm -hmm. to fill something fill a void and he's not going to be able to fill that void until he acknowledges this energy which is that he doesn't f feel fulfilled i talked about this in the video um and he, that's why he tell everybody, we're not here to be happy. We're here to grow. But happiness is a part of growth. Mm -hmm. Happiness yeah. is a part of growth. So, but he's not happy. And he, so he's, every time he opens his mouth, he's always telling us something about him. And you can go right to his chart and look and find it. So, I don't like the way he's teaching astrology, telling people about astrology. He's not even teaching, girl. He's just telling folks some bullshit. I don't, like, I don't like how he's doing that. I don't like it. I've been, I've been into astrology for many years. I, I respect astrology. I don't like how he's, how he's 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 kind of like still thin astrology. He's still thin. Um, he's still thin up um, Christianity. He's still thin up uh, uh, yep. Islam. He's still thin up astrology. He's fucking demolishing everything. He's making folks be like, well, since uh, since I found out he's a fraud, I don't even want to deal with astrology. I don't want people to like, you know, let him ruin their opportunity to get the knowledge of self through astrology because astrology is, is mm -hmm. but it's just like the bible it's just like anything else people can misuse it and that's what he's doing he's misusing astrology because he doesn't yeah. know the self so i'm just here to, to let you all know that your chart is your energy you can make that energy work for you or work against you but you gotta be mm -hmm. a gotta have knowledge of self you gotta know that this is what you this is the energy that, that the most high gave you and this is your gift. What you gonna do with it? You gonna let it run you or you gonna run it? But see, when we young and we we understand, we see that there's things going on with us, but we don't, we know, we know something's going on. We know that people get tired of us talking as Gemini rising. We know that they want us to shut up sometimes, but why? Why is that? <laughs> and until we can understand why, 
We keep doing the same shit over and over, expecting different results because we don't even know where to begin to start repairing this shit to start fixing these things about ourselves. So what astrology does right. is it shows you this is why when you were born, these are the planetary influences that was playing out, and this energy is manifesting through you. Now that you know what it is, you can take and do whatever you want with it. But if you don't know what it is, then you don't know what to do. It's just like if you got a pain in your back and you don't know what's coming from, you know, not drinking enough water. You ain't going to know that you get your ass there and drink more water until you find out that that's the reason why you have the problem. Right? So until we know what the problem is, we can't fix it. So that's all I got to say today. <laughs> well, I, I thank you for that. And you are definitely right. I'm going to, like, um, astrology, you know, getting into all of that. Um, I can honestly say, like, when I started to kind of look into my chart or whatever and um, kind of see some things, like, I've heard people all my life tell me, you got a communication problem. <laughs> you got a communication problem. Me too. And I'm like, it's not me. It's you. And yeah, if I'm going to be this way and I'll be trying to communicate, you just don't understand me. That's right. But, like, I really kind of do have a communication problem. I learned that about myself. No, you don't you have a communication problem. problem. See, my mother used to tell me all the time when I was growing up. I talked about this in the video. I got to send it to you guys. My mother used to tell me all the time you talk too fucking much. Shut your fucking mouth. But what's so mm -hmm. crazy about it is my mother talks too fucking much. But when I was growing up, she was more quiet because my mother was born on the seventh. And so mm -hmm. seven is, a, you know, seven people are, you know, they're quiet. But since my mother's gotten older, she, she talks a whole lot. She out talks me. But as a child, she used to make me feel bad about talking the way that I talk. But I was curious. I want to understand things. I want to know what's going on. Please tell me what am I what am I seeing here? Just talk to me. Tell me. But she and my mother wasn't a talker, so for her, I talked too fucking much, as she would say. Then mm -hmm. other people would tell it to me, and then I would notice that when I was talking, some people would like walk away, and I'm I'm like, oh, she must be walking away because I'm talking too much. But I didn't know how to shut up because I didn't think that I'm like this is my nature. This is what I do, right? Mm -hmm. So when I got into astrology and found out that my brother's son was a uh, Gemini and it talked about how it was a communicator, I was like, oh, fuck, this is, this is it. This is the reason why. Now I understand. I said, okay, now that I understand where this came from, now I can kind of put myself in other people's shoes and look at me because everybody ain't no talker like me, right? Yeah. I, okay, what I have to learn, I'm going to have to balance out that talking with listening. I got to start learning how to mm -hmm. listen. You know, yeah. and a lot of times because Gemini's got two people on them, they're trying to finish the sentence before the other person finishes. We got, we can't do that shit. We got to let them finish. You know, <laughs> and, you know, a lot of times we be wrong because we don't even be listening to them. We're just trying to be like, okay, when she gonna get to that part where I can finish the rest? And that's not good listening. So we have to learn how to listen mm. quiet. And so I train myself. I'm, I st I'm still talking, as you can see. But over the years, I trained myself to look. And then I found out the more that you listen, the better that your communication becomes. Mm. Yeah. You know what? I've, I've been working on that a lot too. And you write it. It has helped me a lot just trying to be quiet and gain and understanding for the person I'm having that communication with. Mm -hmm. I'll be trying to understand them. So I have actually grown a lot since, you know, all of this stuff or whatever. So I'm happy about that, but I do, I really want to get into more. But you said a lot of stuff that he home for me, you know, like with the, with the relationship stuff or me not feeling like I want to be tied down. That's the truth. And I feel like that's the main reason why you know, um, at one point I had a I had someone in my life who was trying to marry me and talking about getting engaged and stuff. <laughs> and I I didn't I didn't you know, it was something about that, you know, and then they was like, Oh, we're gonna move in together. I started having anxiety, you know, like thinking about I ain't never been married and I ain't never lived with a man in my life. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I got a twenty seven year old daughter. Wow. I, I do want to get married someday. I do want to try it out. <laughs> but I, I want to try it. He sound like me. Let's just try something. I want to try it out. You know, he got to have his own room, though. He can't be in my room. <laughs> 
Huh? I said, you're very independent, so, you know, if, a, if you're going to even be with somebody, he got to have a whole hell of a lot to offer, you know? Mm-hmm. You got to have a whole hell, because there's nothing, nothing that you can't really do for yourself. And so to, 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 to make a, to be a union with somebody who is not going to bring excitement to your life, um, you, you, you could do it out, you know? And... Mm-hmm. So I got more square Venus just like you do. I never been married and I never lived with a man, and because I, you know, I just just haven't got, ever got to that point. He got to be somebody. Uh, uh-uh. no. <laughs> so 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 honestly, uh, like, could you see some? But because, because it's so crazy. But like every time I think about living with somebody, you know, now that I've got, you know, I got my own space. When I think about living with somebody, that literally brings up anxiety in me about thinking about having somebody ace that I kind of created for myself. I'm not sure what's going on. Oh, shit. Yo! Spiritually speaking, everybody say you need to teach a class, girl. They say you need to teach a class, girl. Girl, you got to teach a class. You got to teach a class. Oh my gosh. You, ah. Y'all, she said a lot of stuff to me that hit home. You said a lot of stuff to me that hit home. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Because they really, that they really, that really is me. Like they, you know, I feel like that's one of the main reasons why I didn't, why I haven't had children yet. Yeah. Because I don't want to be tied down to that responsibility. Like I like not having that responsibility of a relationship or that responsibility of a child. Or, you know, like I kind of get to just. You know, this like, is the reason why people, this is the reason why they don't want us to have knowledge of self and don't want us to have astrology. When I mean, mean by next day, I mean the people that want us to be programmed and conditioned to follow their rules. See, if you if you knew and understood this about yourself, you could accept it about yourself faster. But if the reason why we don't accept ourselves is because society tells us that a woman who doesn't want to wants who wants to have her freedom is not right. Or a woman who doesn't want to have children, or a woman who, you know, doesn't want to live with a man, something wrong with her. She must be gay. She must be a lesbian. It t- it de- you know, they, that's not, you know, living in a society that does not, you know, advocate knowledge of self, it delays our growth, you know. And so, mm-hmm. this is what they want for you to be. They want you not to know who you are so you can succumb to, mm-hmm. to doing what they want you to do. They don't want you to be mm-hmm. something cameras. They don't want you to be. Uh, a woman who has more than one man. They don't want you to be that. That's hoes. That's your whore. If you do some shit like that, see? See? They want to demonize anybody that goes against what they consider the norm. And how could there be a such thing as a norm when everybody is born different? We all have a, a different yeah. gene. And it's not what you do, it's how you do it. And it's about being honest about your intentions. You know? I had to compromise yeah. a lot. In marriage, I enjoyed living in my own space for years. It is an adjustment for, for sure. Yeah, yeah, I've been living by myself. I, I had a daughter twenty seven years ago. Twenty seven years ago, and I never had no more kids. I never had no more kids. And, but you know what happened? I did wind up getting custody of my three cousins, which I have them now. And had I known then what I know now, I probably just would have took the youngest one and left the other two oldest ones where they was at, and just got them on weekend for holidays, things like that, because. But my life path is six. Anybody know about the life path six? Somebody knew about the life path eight earlier. But my life path is six. And I didn't even realize just how much a life path six I was until I ended up with three more kids and three dogs. I really didn't realize it, you know. But I have that side of me that's, that sacrifices myself and takes care of people. But then I have that side of me that likes my freedom too, you know. Yeah. And I, I just haven't really figured. And now that's one thing I haven't figured out is how to bring balance to both. But I feel like my, my time to bring balance for me now is to not make decisions really quickly. Take my time to make right. a decision. I make decisions real quick. Well, this, 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 the live is getting ready to end. I know you were saying that you want to wrap it up, but do you I want to want come to, back in, or? in the classes? Uh, can you inbox me? And um, I mean, be, I hope you guys are serious because I think I got to pay for a Patreon account. The only way it can get, they can get paid back for what I pay is through you guys. At-
spiritually speaking. Spiritually speaking. I did save the last life. Yes, ma'am, I did. I saved that last life. Yo, she said a lot of stuff that sounds like me.